Ted Williams with you. It's the Golden Boys, Golden Boys. That's Ed Williams, the Golden Boys. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Golden Boys Show. Hey, listen, I got some great social media news that I want to talk about, some very interesting photos. And first and foremost, you know, I stood on a highway corner long enough to know how people felt about uh, able bodied men and women who stand on highway corners holding signs on exit ramps begging for money. I did it. I heard, get off the corner, crackhead. Nigga, get a job. I've heard, I got two jobs. You can't get one. You know, I've heard it all. That was just from my mom. You can only imagine what other people said. No, I'm just teasing. But people do uh, ha- have some hurtful things to say. They throw rocks at you, shout mean things and all of those things. So I know what it's like and how people feel about people who stand on corners holding a sign. Now, this first one is a guy holding a sign, asking for help. It says, I'm homeless, hungry, anything helps. Well, right next to him is a guy that's holding a sign as well. And his said, Walmart is hiring. (laughs) Now, that's help. But how many people that's homeless and begging for money, how many of them do you think really want to work? Or do they they think that it's uh, obviously easier for them to stand there begging for money? This guy could care less about Walmart hiring, okay? The man signed should have said with benefits to see if it moved him to go, hey buddy, what's that number? You know, that kind of thing. This man ain't trying to work. You see him standing next to the sign that says Walmart's hiring, and I'm sure Walmart does have benefits, but he ain't thinking about that. He wants that coin. He wants that almighty dollar. I bet if that man said, I'll hire you right now, I bet he would tell the man, I can't stand on my feet. My feet have neuropathy. You know, I I don't have my medicine. I didn't take my COVID shot. (laughs) My son, bless his heart, he used to what the kids call sag. He used to sag a lot, right? This (laughs) This is a good one. Here's what it says to a guy he's standing next to, and the little boy looks up to him, and he said, I learned how to pull mine up when I was two. (laughs) That little boy trying to school, new school, he said, I learned how to pull my pants up when I was two. What's your excuse? (laughs) That's a good one. In jail, they sag in jail. They got a pair of white boxers on. I don't know whether they want to let the guy next to him see his boxers or that he's got somebody that brought him some fresh drawers in there, but they sag in jail too, right? You know, if that's if that's what you want to do, but I'm going to tell you what, back in my day, and these are some young brothers today, back in my day, this is what we used to rock. We had our two pieces on. We had our brims on. That's how you got women. Not how big your little ass is or sagging down with a pair of Jordans on or nothing. You're supposed to look sharp, dapper. You know what I mean? Those are the names women said. Oh, don't that man look sharp. This is a real good one. These are homeless people now. In these homeless community camps that they got all throughout the city, they don't wear no masks, no isolation from people, no vaccine, no distancing, no quarantine, and no health care. Just living their lives as normal and no dead homeless people. None of them dead. They sit around and kiss each other, breathe all around each other. None of them dead. They every day, them homeless people checking in them camps. They don't wear no masks, no quarantine, no nothing. Ain't got no vaccine or nothing. That's right. And they still live in every day and been around since the pandemic started almost two years ago. Tell me what? Uh Uh-uh. Don't you say that. I read, and this is no um, what they call propaganda. This is none of that. Here's another one. This will give you an example of where I'm going with this. This one says, 11 dangerous pathogens, okay, on the masks. 
These are things that are in the mask that you're wearing every day, okay? These are pathogens, 11 dangerous pathogens. Streptococcus, that's a pneumonia, by the way. Strep, <laughs> that's what it's holding in there. If you have any kind of colds or whatever, it's blocking you from getting it out of the mask. Otherwise, if you're like coughing in the mask, it's getting right back in. So you're not getting nothing out, nothing in. Uh, tuberculosis. Now, you're coughing right in your own face. Or you'll pull it down and cough on somebody else, you know. Here's uh, meningitis, keratitis, keratitis, excuse me. There's uterus and food poisoning. There's no way for you to get any of that out. Because why? You're mandated to mask up. I always talk about this. Polio, one of the most worldwide uh, 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 pandemic, or, or should I say break outbreaks in history, you know, was debilitating people of all sorts, all ages, all genders, and of course, all races. And how was it spread? They were thinking of, where in the hell did this come from? How is it affecting our people? Why? 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 Fecal matter. Now, I had something special lined up, and I'll talk about it maybe in a future episode. But uh, fecal matter. And you know what I said before in my last episode? Not washing your damn hands. That's probably the only thing that we're all guilty of. Not washing our hands. It's simple. Wiping your butt and not washing your hands. Please, make it a habit to do that. I do, and uh, for a long time, maybe, you know, it's not in your... Um, you know, in your uh, <laughs> everyday habits, you know, sometimes we escape that. I do it for two reasons now, and mu and must tell you, sanitizing probably would be the best thing through anything of this. Not masking, not quarantining, not uh, sh shooting, uh, 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 shotting you, and all that. Wash your damn hands. Bottom line, I'm not in fear of this big pandemic. And I have to tell you, there's people proven, they don't never say it, but it's proven that getting the shot doesn't make you totally immune from that. It's been proven. And some, some uh, media organizations, they are out there telling people about it. Okay, here's another one. Watch this. If fully vaccinated can still get it and spread it, why aren't they losing their jobs too? Now, here's people who's been vaccinated and uh, got it again. I don't live in fear, as most people do, but I don't knock them because they don't. The vaccine I'm talking about, you know, that's a choice of our own. It's a spiritual choice. It's an individual choice. And, you know, nobody's going to force me to take something that I really don't know about. It could trigger off something that's uh, internally in me. You know, there's fully vaccinated people. The amount of vaccines that it requires and all of that, they're fully vaccinated and they're still uh, spreading it. I tell you what, the only thing I'm worried about is not somebody not wearing a mask or distancing themselves or all of that as much as I'm fearful of somebody not washing their damn hands. Now, we're going to leave a little bit of room in our, uh, I don't want you to think I'm preaching not to take the uh, vaccine or be scared of not taking it and all that. Everybody has that, your own individual choices. But now here's an individual choice I want you to help me with. Have you seen what in the hell little Kim did to her face? I mean, people are reconstructing themselves. But little Kim, she looked like a damn mannequin. Who in the hell told her she's fine is what I want to know. Little Kim, you look good, girl. You lying to that woman. You have to be. She was fine just the way she is. A little chocolate Nubian drop. I love her little brown cell. Talking about makeovers. Um, I, women get pedicures, manicures. They get titty, I mean, excuse me, boob lifts. They get, um, but now they got uh, 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 implants, butt implants, breast implants, all kind of stuff. And they're noticeable enough for you to say, damn, you know, oh, wait, uh, you know, those kind of movements. What in the hell was she thinking? I Listen, I've never heard say, man, if she had a little more lash, she'd be the shit. This woman, who again told her she looked good. That's horrible. 
Lord have mercy, a bird can lay an egg in here. And then if you kiss her, could you imagine him over look? <laughs> Don't move your eyes. Listen, social media is, it's where I get my information from. You know, some of it might be real. Some of it might not. Some of it might be true. Some of it might not be, uh, might be false. And last but not least, one last piece of social media news, and I love this. Put the politicians on minimum wage. Close down their businesses. Deny them health care and isolate them. And you and me will see just how fast things would change. This is a goodie. <laughs> this is or should be a answer to washing your hands, okay? When you use the toilet. This is a doozy. I didn't try this sooner. My wife and I love this. It's very hygienic. <laughs> Clear rear bidet. I totally love it. I Clear really your rear. That this company has a real sense of humor about their product. And it's so easy to install. It only took me 15 minutes. And everything. I don't know. The only thing about this, I have to tell you before he gets into it. The only thing about this that might discourage me is having a blast of water up my ass. Okay. Just sitting there, you know, you know how you do. Oh, that kind of blow you off the toilet. Shit go everywhere. That's the only dislike I have about this idea. Clear rear. Inside the box. Now, for those of you wondering, like, is it uncomfortable? You can change the pressure settings. <laughs> the pressure settings. Who in the hell would have this on high? <laughs> you know what I mean? Pressure setting. First, let's get to the word pressure. That throws something up in you, almost like an enema. <laughs> you remember back in the day when you got stopped up, you either took some phenomen, x lax or something, but now this is telling, or an enema. They stick that water bottle, the hot water bottle, and put that one little part, but uh, it ended up being a little nozzle there where it had some holes in it, and you squeeze the damn water bottle, and it'd go right up your butt. Stuff would just run out of you. So they're talking about pressure, and all that. And then if the water turns cold, you don't want no cold water shot up your ass. Toilet paper, and there's no more twisting and turning, so it's great for our backs. I don't understand how we've been using toilet paper this entire time. And when you go to white... Oh, did you see that? That's what I'm talking about right there. They done ended the commercial. And I'm just thinking about shaking somebody's hands, and that's what happened to them an hour ago or an hour before. They don't wipe doo-doo all over their hands and everything. They said, Ted Williams, the golden voice. I wash my hands, like I said, 15 or 20 times a day. Whenever you see me in a restaurant quickly, a bowling alley, a car lot, anywhere, Hollywood Casino, my friend's house, my daughter's house, whatever, I make a quick little run to the bathroom and wash my hands before I even touch my snotty ass grandchildren. And I love them to death, but they, <sniffs> hi, Paul Paul. Shit. That's the only big thing out of the pandemic that made any sense. <laughs> Boost the numbers today, we're kinda low. Only 50% of Ohioans are taking the, uh, yeah. Just tell them 150,000 have just been infected in the last week. That's all you gotta do. Okay, we'll call you back on some more numbers here. Let me uh, call the CDC and see if they up theirs. Yeah, the FDA. Oh, you already talked to them? Oh, their numbers? Oh, okay, good. Let's get the state done and then we can all get paid. Believe me, that's probably some of the conversation. Ha-ha! <laughs> but uh, clear rear. Ha-ha! <laughs> that's one way to eliminate some of those germs that are passing. Wash your damn hands. That's the safest and the one personal choice that we have that we can do together. Let's stay clean. Let's stay clean together. And it starts with washing. Please, please wash us. We are very dirty. <laughs> you know what I hate? I hate standing in line at a grocery store and watching someone buy a pack of gum with their damn credit card. I hate that shit. I mean, they're going through the whole kiosk. They're waiting for this frame, uh, uh, screen to pull up and this, that, and all. all for, I'll buy the damn gum. That's what I feel like saying. Shit, you put me in line and still waiting. And she's trying. And then, God forbid, she put the wrong pin number in or she swiped it wrong. 
Please, y'all, pay cash for little sh Use your credit card for a 29-inch screen or something I know not to stand behind your ass. Lord, have mercy. I've seen some stuff on a, a, a most daring. Whatever you do, go to YouTube and look up most daring. They had, this is no lie, this brother was on this bus and this old white man, you got to, please, I'm trying to think of the episode. But anyway, this brother was, was saying somebody, get out my face. And the old white man said, man, you ain't going to do shit. The brother got up out of his back seat in the bus and just took it for granted that all black folks is bad. And that's not the truth. There's some black folks that get their ass dusted. And this one did. This brother got up, young brother, with this old man. He got up there and said, I'll smack the shit out of you, is what he said to the old white man. And the white man said, you ain't going to do shit. He got up and pushed that white man. And that white man two-pieced his ass. Boom, boom. And the people in the bus said, ooh, he beat the shit out of that brother. Knocked him all down and everything. And the people in the bus, the people in the bus felt bad for the black dude who started the whole thing that they was like, Oh, 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 they was watch. They was like, there was blow by blow account. Every time the, the white man hit him, and it was all. And the only reason why nobody really stopped it, because they felt like that's what that brother deserved. He needed to get his ass whipped, and he did. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! A lot of people out there think that old people can't fight, or short people can't fight. Or you never know who can kick your ass, that's for sure. I don't I don't size nobody up, or you never know what another man can do. You know what I mean? So don't play people cheap. There's a lot of people. I had to kick some ass myself. People thought I was thin frame, light skin. I was, uh, you know, that kind of person, you know, thin and light. Then you got a big brother, you know, who think he can kick God, uh, uh, everybody's ass. You know, I had to set a few people down. And the rest, once the word get out that you don't kick somebody's ass, they'll go around and tell them, man, with him, he'll whip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> now here, now, now here's a very big entertainer. I don't consider myself a, a celebrity, but this happened to one of the biggest entertainers. <laughs> I gotta see that again. Here we go, Will Smith. Will like fly slap the shit out of his hand. Hey, sir, you said kiss me in my mouth. That happened to me downtown. Again, I'm not homophobic. I love my people. I love everybody. I love everybody in an agape way, in a, in a, in a Christly way. And uh, I'm down there and I'm signing this, uh, one of my autographed caricature pictures that I have in my charity. And, uh, as I lift, I mean, as I feel this guy breathing, his head is about right here. So as I look around it, like, back up, man, the dude did like this here. Like, gave me, like, well, he did touch me. I am going to say, he gave me a peck in my lip. I started to knock the shit out of his ass, but that would have led to a media frenzy, as well as, uh, again, not sizing them up, because some of them gave me a fight too now. I done seen some martial artists that were gay, and they whipped some ass. That's right. They were. I thought they were gonna fight like this here. <laughs> he, 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 he put up his dukes. Not them dukes, he put up these dukes. Left, right, left, right. Here's a good news story that I wanna share with you all, okay? A 12-year-old boy's dream comes true when he's adopted by his best friend's family. Now, this is something you don't see every day. This is beautiful. A 12-year-old white guy gets adopted by his best friends who happen to be black. In Nashville, y'all, in Nashville, the South is growing. <laughs> it's growing more ways than one. Although sometimes I, I watch Elvis Presley and I often think, hey, did that white boy ever get adopted by a black family? Because Elvis, you know, he got a little bit of black swag. I love him. He's more so uh, a black white boy than I think of Hall of Notes. <laughs> they call Hall of Notes the Blue-Eyed Soul Brothers. 
or even the Righteous Brothers, even people older than that, more in my generation. And you know what they sang? Oh. Every time I hear this song, I think of the movie Ghost. Um, I hunger for your touch. They were soulful too. Oh my love, my darling. They were considered back then like the Blue Eyed Soul Brothers. Although the, when they made that record, I can't go for that, no. I know can do, I can't go for that. Yeah. My favorite, uh, uh, my favorite, um, uh, Blue Eyed Soul Brothers Hall of Notes song is, uh, your kiss, your kiss is on my lips. You say your kiss, your kiss is on my lips. Cause there's a part in there, a change that go. Dun, 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 dun. Ow! Play that for here. That's this. Now, a big shout out going to voiceovers. My golden voice picks are Morgan Freeman, David Attenborough, not in that order, and Oprah Winfrey. Oh, Oprah just melts me. Okay, and so does David Attenborough and Morgan Freeman. But there was a special voiceover announcer for the David Letterman show, Late Night with David Letterman. Now, I don't have his voice, neither can I emulate him, but this is how he meant to me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Letterman. Dun, dun, dun. You know, Paul Schaefer would get into it and all. No longer with us. He is the best. Rest in peace. I love him so much. Yes. Here's a uh, footnote to this whole program, and I want to leave you with this thought. Even if you cannot change all of the people around you, you can change the people you choose to be around. Life's too short to waste your time on people who don't respect, appreciate, and value you. Spend your life with people who make you smile who make you laugh, and most of all, feel loved. That's going to do it for this edition of The Service Mission till I return on our next episode of The Golden Voice Show. I got to take two steps to the rear and get out of here. But hey, you stick and stay. More of the best of our shows is yet to come. Brother man, sister too if you can, be nice to someone short because you never know when someone short has to be nice to you. Until next time, may your God be with you. I'm out. That's right. I love that song. Bro. It's been six months since I've lost my Kathy, okay? And uh, today, I was brushing my teeth. And, uh, you know, thank you, Jesus, for giving me this golden smile as well as the voice. And her and I... Our teeth were the most hideous. And these are mine. But what I was going to say to you, these are veneer caps. But what I was going to say to you is that we were brushing our teeth. Uh, I mean, I was brushing my teeth today. And I remembered when Kathy and I used to always say, we wish God would help us in uh, getting us some new teeth. And lo and behold, the Lord blessed us with these smiles. She got a chance to leave this earth with a golden smile, just like me. And so we're so grateful. God does hear our prayers. Now, if you're a person who doesn't repent and follow in the lifestyle of which Jesus requires us to, don't think your prayers are just going to be answered. He's given you mercy and grace all day long. Undeserved mercy and grace, I might add. But uh, try something different today. Make something different. Sacrifice and make different choices. I'm not a minister by no stretch of the imagination, but I do have some advice I could give from my own experiences with the Lord.